keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In the name of God, who loves us always. Amen. This Sunday, we have the parable of the ten bridesmaids. According to the Gospel of Matthew, towards the end of the Gospel, ten virgins await a bridegroom, and five have brought enough oil for their lamps for the wait. Another five need to purchase more oil after the bridegroom is delayed. For many centuries, uh, this parable has been a famous parable in the Christian life. And it had a clear end times theme, be prepared for the end. It was one of the most popular parables in the Middle Ages, and it had influence on Gothic art and sculpture and architecture of German and French cathedrals. It actually, at the entrance to the cathedral, where often the Day of Judgment is uh, portrayed, this parable is portrayed, uh, carved into the rock above the doorway into the cathedral. It's interesting that this parable, too, comes towards the end of Matthew's Gospel. So it's these parables are leading up to underscoring again and again, more and more clearly, the message of Jesus. When a crisis occurs and the bridegroom is delayed, this is the turning point of the parable. And one of the things that it sh tries to show is where our fatal flaw as humans are. I don't believe that the parable is about some of us being prepared and others not, and those not losing out, thrown into the outer darkness. Through the lens of the pandemic and my own health, I've been thinking about this parable in a new way and also from our liturgies of last Sunday. If you look at the parable, it would be easy to say, well, it's either or. Either I'm just not prepared and I lose out, or I'm prepared and I get in. Well, it seems to me that both of those images can be problematic for humans. While it is good to be prepared, to be taken, uh, proper precautions for our health and our safety and our life. It's also true that we can become obsessed with being prepared. And in times where it's unclear what will happen, a delay has happened, we're waiting for a test result, we're waiting for the pandemic to be over, we're waiting for the election to be called. It's easy to try to find the right way to be prepared to have all the things in perfect alignment. That's just not the way the created order, including humanity, is. We are always imperfect, but it's in our imperfectness that we find hope and resurrection. So what I think this parable has come to mean for me this year is that it is the maintaining of the light. To hold the light. And our job is, whether sometimes we are unprepared or too prepared, we should never lose sight of the light of Christ, that we are called to keep burning for the community, for creation and the world. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about where we are uh, at Emmanuel. Of course, Pastor Marsha is very ill in the hospital, receiving all sorts and conditions of good and helpful drugs and therapies so that she can heal from COVID and pneumonia. I want to also share with you that my husband Brian has tested positive, and it's very likely I'll be tested today that I am positive. I think that this is just part of entering into deep, more deeply the suffering of our whole 
humanity in this time. I'm feeling well. I'm a little tired. I have a little bit of a headache. But I hope and pray that as I receive the test results and I learn the test results and I continue to quarantine, that I continue to heal. I trust that that will be the case. But what is important to know is that we all live in the midst of death and death can come at any time for us. Those of us that have had any kind of serious illness in our life, or have almost had a very tragic circumstance, an accident missed on the road, uh, anything like that, we know that just by waking up every day, every day is a gift. My bishop in Virginia, Bishop Peter James Lee, uh, when I was supposed to send him a note, he always said, make sure you send that note because I could be hit by a bus tomorrow. And then he kind of chuckled. <laughs> But that is true. If not COVID, cancer, a fall, and some of us do live into old age, but we all die. And it is holding the light in the midst of death that we find our resurrection and true life. I think that's what Jesus was saying in this parable. I want to give you spiritual homework for the next week which was given to me by my living school colleagues on our call a few weeks ago. Please watch My Octopus Teacher. It's on Netflix, and I'm sure you can download it. It is the story of a man, a South African man, on the western coast of South Africa on the Atlantic, who had lost his way. He was a documentary filmmaker, but as he got into, I'm guessing, his 40s, his 50s, everything had fallen apart in his life. His family life was not good. He and his, his relationship with his wife and son were falling apart. He doesn't tell us exactly the nature of the problem. But what he did is he repaired to his family's cottage on the cliff of the Atlantic and he began swimming in the shallows of the sea kelp forest uh, just below his cottage and home. And he did this day after day after day, almost a year's worth of this practice by himself in the cold Atlantic water. And he began in that place to become aware of all the creative order under the sea. And he particularly became friends with an octopus. And the octopus taught him, as indeed creation, humanity of the other can teach us. Octopi live about a year and they are always uh, subject to the predator, the, in South Africa, the pajama shark, that is their main predator as they go out from under their rock every day to find food, it could be their last day. So one day the octopus in uh, Craig's, South African Craig's world, went out and was attacked by a pajama shark. She managed to get away, but she lost one of her legs. And she stayed under the rock and hid and recovered and slowly, ever slowly, as every day he went, he noticed a small piece of her leg came back and more and more. And she was able to go back out once again. She had other run-ins with the pajama shark, but how she actually died is that octopi die by giving birth at the end of their life. And so he documents her dying as she's giving life. I think that this uh, My Octopus Teacher film was important for me to see right now. It's been very hard, I know, for all of us to feel hopeful in these days. But on Sunday when we sang, and of course took a risk in singing Luke's Eterna, for the live stream, Morton Lawrenson's wondrous work. 
I felt that sense that it is the light eternal that we hold dear. And that whatever we do, wherever we're called in our life, we are called to spread that light. For some of us, that means staying at home and being in touch with our students and family through the internet. For some of us, it means teaching at a risk in person. For others of us, it means calling on folks by phone, checking in on folks. For me, I hold the light by being with you, whether it's now in this recording or it's at the office or it's recording the music. I do that surely knowing the risk of doing that, but I do it because it gives life. And that is what we're all called to do, to hold that light. I have no regrets about doing that for my own safety. And I know Brian doesn't because we both live to do what we're called in our vocations to do. If I had not had you in the office and the liturgy during these months since March, I would have died in spirit. I couldn't have held the light. So thank you. And I also rest easy knowing that I have with Brian, given birth to two wondrous children and now grandchildren who will carry on the light. And so everything that I do now is uh, precious and a gift. And I hope to be giving that light and sharing that light and receiving that light from you. So all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Amen.